In this video, we're going to discuss Schrodinger's cat, which is a thought experiment designed to show a problem with the Copenhagen interpretation in quantum mechanics of wave function collapse. So in 1935, Schrodinger, the same guy of the Schrodinger equation, <coughs> proposed the following thought experiment. Let's say we have a quantum particle in a binary state. It's 50% uh, probability that it has decayed and 50% probability that it hasn't decayed. This particle is in some sealed container and whenever the particle decays it is going to set off a trap such that there's a vial of poison inside a sealed box with a cat and whenever the particle, whenever we do our measurement and the particle is decayed um, the poison is going to bust open and the cat is going to die. So don't ask why this uh, thought experiment has to kill cats. Uh, it's just a thought experiment. No real cats were harmed during this idea. So basically the quantum state of our particle is linked to the life or death of the cat. So if the quantum particle has decayed, or, or so let's say if the quantum particle hasn't decayed, then the cat is alive and well. If it, if it has decayed, then the cat is dead. So we can represent the state of the quantum particle as follows. So there's square root 1 over 2 in the state where it has not decayed, plus square root 1 over 2 state where it uh, has decayed and the cat is dead. So I guess you could say the, the state here is, the question is, is the cat alive in this state? So when we open the box, we're effectively taking a measurement on this system. So just like in the previous video, we have a probability of measuring each of the states. We have a 50% chance of measuring that the cat is alive. The square root of 1 over 2 squared is 1 half, or 50%. 50% chance that the cat is dead. Square root of 1 over 2 squared, 1 half, 50% chance it's dead. So obviously it makes it very apparent that once we've opened the box and the cat is either alive or dead, if we look again in a very short period of time, the same result is going to happen. The cat is still either going to be alive or dead, but whatever happens, the same state the cat was in during the first look, it's going to be in during the second look uh, very soon thereafter. But the interesting thing about the superposition of states and the Copenhagen interpretation is that before this wave function collapse occurs and we've opened the box, the quantum particle is equally within both of these states. It's equally uh, decayed and not decayed. The cat is equally alive and dead. So the cat is both alive and dead until we've done a measurement, until we have opened the box and looked at the state of the cat. Now this seems ridiculous when we take it to the level of a macroscopic object because it, intuitively we have this feeling that the cat is inside the box and it's either alive or dead the whole time. We don't have a half alive, half dead cat until we open the box. So it raises the questions about what constitutes measurement, what are the consequences of measurement, all those types of ideas. Because, you know, is it a measurement whenever the cat sniffs the poison to see if it's decayed or not? Is it, is it a measurement when we open the box? what constitutes a measurement. There's lots of questions here. So Schrodinger's cat is something that shows up in popular culture every now and then of people talking about a situation where it's uh, both yes and no, both alive and dead until you've done the measurement and that you don't really know what the state of a system is until you have looked at it. But once you have looked at it, you have the empirical evidence and it's going to stay in that same state uh, thereafter.